Hello. So we're going to actually take a look at the white blood cells today and continue on with our discussion of blood. So white blood cells, also known as leukocytes, are another one of the formed elements of the blood. The leukocytes, as you can kind of see from the slide right here, are grouped into two main categories, those which have uh, cytoplasmic granules in the cells, and those are what we call the granulocytes. These include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. And probably one of the easiest ways to remember which ones are the granulocytes versus the ones that lack these granules, which are the agranulocytes, is to remember a couple easy sayings. So for the granulocytes, as you can kind of see in all of them, they all end in fill. So an easy way to remember if it's a granulocyte is just to remember that fill eats grains. In other words, anything that ends in fill is going to be a granulocyte. Agranulocytes include, include the lymphocytes, which there's actually a couple different types of those, as well as monocytes. And again, the saying to kind of remember this one is uh, no grains in sight. And at least in terms of remembering which one's the most common to the least common, if you can remember the saying, never let monkeys eat bananas, that will let you know that neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, then basophils is the cor correct order in terms of most common to least common of the white blood cells. You can kind of see here, this is showing you a cartoon version of a few different pictures of the different blood cells. You can see the different white blood cells have some different differences in color as well as shapes of their nucleus. And we will take a look at each of these and talk specifically about the main uh, function of each of these different lymphocytes, uh, excuse me, not lymphocytes, leukocytes. So again, standard counts on these ones is about that four to 11,000, depending on which book you read, it might say five to 10,000 per microliter, really somewhere in that range. And again, the main function of the leukocytes is to provide protection to the body and again, as we talk about the immune system and other things like that, you'll see that it really is the function of these white blood cells that performs most of the functions of the immune system. And in terms of how long can these last in the bloodstream, again, not something that I would say would be uh, one of these things that, again, memorize exactly all of the stuff that you need to know about this. I mean, the lifespan of these things, they can be anywhere from a few hours until seven, several days or years, depending on which type of cell we're talking about here. You can see there is five different types of these, so we will take a look at the neutrophils first. The neutrophils are the most common of the leukocytes. I think it says they're anywhere from about 50 to, in some cases they say up to about 70% of the white blood cells. Uh, this one, one of the ways to kind of tell it apart from the other ones is it's cytoplasmic granules. They are somewhat distinct, but probably not as distinct as you'll see with the eosinophils or the basophils. The other thing you'll see on this one is it has a multi-lobed nucleus. So if I kind of highlight it right here, you can see multi-lobes to this. So in some cases, up to five lobes of the nucleus here. This one can be in circulation for a number of days, up to a number of days, and sometimes as short as a few hours. And really when we look at this one, its main job is to be a phagocyte of bacteria. So this thing is a rather picky eater. It's going to find a little bacteria coming along. It's going to come along, engulf it, digest it, break it down. You can kind of see that on this next slide right here. You can see it takes in the bacteria right here. It then fuses with the lysosome, digests it, kills it off degrades it, gets rid of some of the stuff there, and to alert the rest of the immune system, it may present parts of these antigens so the rest of the immune system can see what was, pretty much what was in you. Another of the granulocytes is going to be the acetophil. Um, it actually gets its name from the fact that the main stains that you a lot of times use on body tissues and other stuff like that is what we call an H and E stain or a hematoxylin and eosin stain. The eosinophil, its cytoplasmic granules, the one thing that they really stain well with is eosin. So it gets its name from the fact that it actually picks up that color. So what we end up seeing is a nice pink granules in this one. Generally, it's not very common. Like it says, they're anywhere from about 1% to 3% of the white blood cells. So not very many of these. 
its nucleus. A lot of times it's what we call a barbell nucleus, where it's two lobes with a small connection in the middle. Again, takes a little while to develop, can last a number of days in there. Main function on this one is actually destruction of eukaryotic pathogens, so things like funguses, definitely parasitic worms. Um, a lot of times it is involved with, you know, helps to inactivate an allergic response. The last of the different granulocytes is going to be the basophil. This one anywhere from half to about 1% of white blood cells. It does have a multi-lobed nucleus. Main thing you can kind of see from the cartoon picture and when I actually show you an actual image of these, what you'll see is that the granules are actually so large and distinct that a lot of times you don't see the nucleus that well. Um, this one is in circulation. A lot of times I refer to this one as kind of a flare cell. So if you think about like a road flare, you put this up to let other people know that you're having trouble or having an issue. These cells kind of do the same thing. They release things called inflammatory cytokines. And what these cytokines do is it's pretty much just like that flare. It's a message going out to other cells saying there's a problem here. So things like histamine are released from this. Histamine is one of the main mediators of inflammation. It's going to draw more fluid, more cells to that area, pretty much call in the cavalry. The other thing it does is a short-acting anticoagulant heparin, which is, again, it's going to allow more blood, more fluids to get to that area, and therefore more blood cells or immune cells to actually be able to go and fight this off, any type of infection that might be there. So that completes your granulocytes, and again, they all end in fill. So again, remember, fill eats grains. In terms of the agranulocytes, and again, our second most common is of all the white blood cells is going to be the lymphocyte. Um, we'll talk actually in more detail about this when we discuss the immune system. The lymphocytes are your T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. They are involved in really your specific immune system. So the B cells make antibodies. The T cells specifically go out and attack other cells that are foreign to the body. These ones can last very short term in there if they are memory cells, and we'll talk about memory again when we go to the immune system, to see that certain memory cells of these lymphocytes can live years or longer. And the last of the white blood cells is the monocyte, generally the largest of the white blood cells, and the third most common of all white blood cells, so 5-10% somewhere around that region. Generally what we end up seeing on this one is it has a U-shaped nucleus, generally the largest of the white blood cells. And this one is very similar to neutrophils and what it does. It's a macrophage as well. So it's going to phagocytize different things. The main thing on this one is unlike the neutrophil, which was to me a rather picky eater, it, the neutrophil only was going to phagocytize bacteria. When we look at the monocyte, it is much more refined, I guess, in that sense, in that it will eat a number of different things. It's not just going to eat just burgers and fries. It's going to go and eat Chinese food, Italian food, anything that it can pretty much get its hands on. So this one is going to go, it'll engulf debris, bacteria, and other foreign bodies that could be in there. And a lot of times we see we call these actually macrophages when they're out in the tissues. So this is one of the cell types that will actually leave the bloodstream, go out into the tissues, and find foreign bodies. And as you can kind of see here, here's a number of different ones here. So you can see the basophil with its distinct granules. Again, almost can't really see the nucleus in there. I think that's a lobe, and that's a lobe right there. But difficult to see due to the fact that there's such a large number of these really large distinct granules. The eosinophil, you can see it stains a little bit more red. It has these cytoplasmic granules. This is what I meant by that barbell nucleus. One lobe here, one lobe here with a little connector in the center. The other one here, the neutrophil, you can see its granules maybe not quite as distinct. Multi-lobe nucleus. One of the ones that you can get confused are the monocytes with the neutrophils. So the monocyte, you can see no granules in here, U-shaped nucleus. And the lymphocyte is generally smallest with a rather large nucleus that's taken up a quite a big portion of the cell. And as we said, some of these will actually have to leave the bloodstream to help fight stuff off, and we're going to see leukocytes when they actually travel outside the blood vessels are going to do this through a three-step process. So the first step is margination, followed by diapedesis, and finally chemotaxis. 
to me, the easiest way to explain this is how leukocytes are going to leave the bloodstream is a lot like how you get off the highway. So the first thing when you're traveling along the highway, you need, you're going to know your exit's coming up. First thing you want to do is you want to get over in that right-hand lane. And that's basically what happens with margination. They get over to the side and are actually going to start rolling along the surface of the vessel wall here. So to me, a lot like getting over in that right-hand lane. Once your exit comes up, you're going to take your exit. That is diapedesis. With a diapedesis, these cells actually squeeze their way through the spaces between the cells and work their way out or in or out of the capillary. Finally, if you're going someplace, you're probably going to follow the directions that you have or you might follow your GPS to wherever. That's basically what happens with chemotaxis. These cells are now going to follow chemical that have been released that are going to get them to the area where there's a problem. So chemotaxis are pretty much following the chemical trail or following their GPS to where the issue is. And again, once they get there, they're going to phagocytize, try to digest, get rid of these foreign cells. Again, there can be a number of different disorders. Normal leukocyte count or normal white blood cell count, like we said, 4 to 11, 5 to 10,000. If you have any level below that, it's what they call leukopenia, which is kind of 5,000 or less. Leukocytosis would be greater than that 10, 11,000. Again, these are not necessarily always disorders. If there's no real reason for these, we would definitely call it disorder. But if you have a particular infection, leukocytosis is a normal response to that. Um, one of the other things I would kind of say on this one is we were kind of looking through those different ones and the number of kind of the percentages of these different ones, those are those normal percentages. So that 50 to 60 percent of the new of the white blood cells are neutrophils. The particular percentages that are the basophils, eosinophils. This is kind of standard. And one of the tests that a lot of times doctors will try to do to figure out if you have some type of infection and they don't really know what it is, one of the things a lot of the times that they'll do is what they call a differential white blood cell count, where they actually look at and count a sample of your blood and determine what percentages you have of these different white blood cells. And the, the reason this can be very helpful is if, let's say, you have higher than normal levels of neutrophils. As we said, neutrophils are phagocytes of bacteria. If you have higher than normal levels of neutrophils, that might be indicative of a bacterial infection. Or let's say instead of that 2% of eosinophils that we normally would have, let's say eosinophils are up at 8 or 10%, they might say that you have worms. So these are definitely ways to help medical professionals figure out a particular type of infection by looking at the different levels of these white blood cells. And again, low blood cell counts that can happen for a number of different reasons, but a lot of times we see leukopenia when people are undergoing chemotherapy because these blood cells are fast growing. It's one of the things that a lot of times are more affected by chemotherapy. Another thing that you may have heard of, at least, and it sounds similar to leukocyte, is leukemia. This is actually blood cancer. Uh, what it is is the white blood cells are growing. You're getting overproduction of actually non-functional white blood cells. And you get extraordinarily high numbers of these. And again, Limited resources in the body, what a lot of times this means is if you have overproduction of one particular immature white blood cell, a lot of times it means that the other blood cells are not going to be functioning normal. So a lot of times this might mean that one of the indicators of this might be uh, anemia because you're not producing the right number of red blood cells because you're producing so many white cells. Another indicator a lot of times with leukemia is uh, kind of a rash that they call petechia. It's actually a slight leaking of your blood vessels, so you're kind of bleeding from your capillaries, gives you this little rash, and that's again because you're making so many white blood cells, you actually are not making enough platelets, and you're getting small, pretty much small ruptures in the blood vessels.